Um, Zhong Nanliu, the paper I will present is a category aware multi interest model for personalized product search. First, I will introduce the background of this paper personalized product search. In recent years, online shopping is becoming more and more popular in people's daily life. To buy certain items, users usually issue queries to describe their demands, and then the platform provides item lists related to the queries for users to purchase. Similar to the web search, studies have shown that enhancing user history can improve the quality of search results. For example, if a user used to buy Apple's products and now issues a query computer, what she really wants to buy may be Mac. If the search engine could rank Mac higher, the user satisfaction will be improved. There exist some approaches to, to try to solve this problem. However, most of them embed users into one single vector, which may have some drawbacks, and we can divide these approaches into two groups. The first kind of approaches builds general query independent user profile in the offline training stage. They construct static embeddings for users and products, which are efficient to apply in real systems. However, they cannot represent user multiple preferences. For example, a user may prefer surfaces on computers and prefer iPhones on cell phones. If we embed this user into one vector, the preferences of different categories will be mixed up together, thus making the profile inaccurate. The second kind of approach is builds query-dependent user profile according to the current queries in the online inference or running time. Different from the first ones, they can capture query-specific user interest. If the current query is your phone, these approaches can utilize techniques such as query attention to make the user profile pay more attention to the related item such as computers and tablets in user historical behavior. However, it is too expensive to process and aggregate historical items of users in the running time at this approach speed. To overcome the above challenges, we propose a category-aware multi-interest model, KAMI. In KAMI model, we argue that K different representations reflecting diverse interests need to be built, which makes our model both effective and efficient. Firstly, we build and store user diverse preferences separately in the offline stage, so that interests in different categories will not affect each other in a disorganized manner. A certain purchased item will only have effects on the interests related to it. Secondly, in the online service or testing phases, the systems only need to aggregate a limited number of preference vectors with regard to the current query and candidate items, which is more efficient than the query-dependent approaches. Furthermore, we leverage the category information to construct and aggregate the multiple interests of a user. Specifically, each preference vector of a user has a corresponding category indication to infer the distribution of categories this vector focuses on. Next, I will give you an overview of the Kami model. Different from the web search scenario, there are sufficient relationships between entities including users, products, and several attributes in personalized product search. KG embedding model is suitable and shown to be effective under this situation in previous studies. Kami model follows this paradigm and adapts the translation-based embedding method. The translation-based embedding methods assume that for each relation x, r, y, the tail entity y should be equal to the translation entity t, x, r, where t is a designed translation operator. Based on this assumption, we can optimize the embedding x, r, y for them by maximizing the similarity s, y given x and r between y and t, x, r. Specifically, our task is to grade s, i given u and q to rank items. So this score can also be regarded as the score function for item i and the query q issued by user u and the personalized product search situation. And here is a KG we built for the personalized product search situation. However, simple translation-based methods cannot apply to all relations, especially for the search and purchase relation. First, the relational embedding of search and purchase should be relevant to the query context. 
For example, the embedding of query cell phone is supposed to be different from the embedding of query computer. Second, as we discussed before, user embeddings should be multiple vectors with corresponding category indications. To construct the category indications, we also need to construct the category embedding for queries and items. Finally, a purchase may be only related to a few preferences, not all. We need to selectively aggregate the multiple entries while providing personalized results for users. And this is the overall structure of our Kami model. The left part is the knowledge graph we build, and the red part is module for search and purchase relation. We can see that for the user alice, we build preference embedding and category indications respectively. For example, the first preference embedding is Apple, and the, the corresponding category indication is cell phones and tablets, which means Alice prefer Apple's products on the category of cell phones and tablets. To optimize these embeddings, we separate the relations in KG into two categories, and I will introduce them respectively in the following part. The first one is static relations. Static relations refer to the relation which are irrelevant to the search context as other KG, such as is brand or both for you. We use the vanilla translation method to optimize them. For a triplet x, r, y, the similarity function is defined as follows, which is a simple dot product model. And we use softmax function to estimate the probability of existing triplet. And due to the large amount of negative ones, we use negative sampling and NLL loss to optimize them. The dynamic relations referring to the search and purchase relations are the most important part of our model. To model these relations, firstly, we need to build a relation vector. And as we discussed before, the relation vector should be calculated according to the query context Q. And we use a nonlinear function to aggregate the query words to get it. And the word embedding is also tuned in the training process. Secondly, we need to construct the category embedding for query Q and I. We use the same function to get them. For query Q, we still use the words in it, and for item, we use the words in the last category of them. Having constructed these vectors, we measure the probability through the combination of k matching score between user interests and items. We can split this equation into several parts. These parts can be regarded as the personal interests. We use them to calculate the similarity between item I and the user's case uh, different, uh, interests. WK is the combining weight. We use them to combine K, uh, different interests. PI is the global interest, which stands for the popularity of items. And lambda U is the user-specific weights. We use them to combine the personal interests and global interests. Next, I will introduce the calculation of the, about the combining weight, WK. It is obvious that the combining weight should be determined by the category embeddings among users, queries, and items. Firstly, the category embedding for the triggered interest should be aligned with that of query. If the current query is a computer, we should mainly focus on the user interest about electronics. Or in other words, the, this search and purchase behavior should be triggered by this interest. Secondly, the category embedding for the triggered interest should also be aligned with that of product, and the reason is the same. And notice in this equation, we design temperature parameter tau. We implement tau in two different ways, hyperparameter and parameter. In the first way, we linearly decrease the temperature in our training process to make the distribution sharper and sharper. In the second way, we implement it as a user-specific parameter to represent user specific, specific strategy of combining interest. For example, some users may buy products only because the product matches one of their interests, and others may buy products only after a deep consideration. Now we can revisit the framework of Kami again. We can see we use the category information of query and the item to aggregate k different preference embedding to get the final score. And the calculation of probability and loss function is the same as static relations. We use softmax and use negative sampling and NL loss to optimize them. Now we can discuss the difference between our approaches and previous approaches, which embed user into one single vector. In our model, we do not force the whole of user interest needs to align with the products. 
which may introduce some which may introduce some noises to irrelevant preferences. Otherwise, we only require some of her preferences whose weight is high need to be near the atom. Furthermore, we introduce homogenization regularization to avoid the redundancy between user interests. We explicitly maximize the distance between category indication embedding for each interest. We don't choose the interest embedding because users can be passionate fans of some companies, but users always buy products in different categories. Finally, we add these losses together to optimize our Kami model. Next, I will introduce the experiment parts of our model. We use the Amazon dataset and extract query from the metadata of item as previous approaches did, and we also compile several baselines. Specifically, we multiply the embedding size with k in DIEM and denote this model as DIEM M to verify the improvement of the proposed model. Kami is not caused by the enlargement of the embedding size D. And for our model, we implement three variants: Kami H and Kami P implement tau as hyperparameter and parameter respectively. And in Kami R, we only use REST relations in KG to compare with query-dependent approaches, which didn't utilize other relations. First, we can find that Kami R model achieves comparable or better performance over TEM. The reason may be that we explicitly capture category information of query and item to help aggregate user interests. Secondly, we can find that both Kami P and Kami H model outperforms all base lenses including DIEM M, which verifies the effectiveness of our model. Third, we can find Kami H outperforms Kami P in all datasets in our experiments. The reason may be turning tall for each user is difficult for the KG embedding model, and we also find that values of tall of most users are very similar to the initial value after training, which supports our hypothesis. Besides, we also conduct ablation studies to show the effectiveness of designed modules. The results show that all the modules we, we designed do improve the performance. Then, we conduct some case studies. This figure shows that the coefficients between the category indication representations and several category embeddings for items in dataset toys and games. From the figure, we can infer that these diverse preference vectors model preference in different categories. For example, user A's first interest mainly focuses on the board games category, and her fourth interest mainly aims at the building sets. Our model separates them into different vectors to avoid disorganized integration. Besides, we can also observe that its entangled interests are different between users. For example, the third interest of user A and user B focuses on different categories. And finally, we conduct query latency analysis of three models. DIEM, TM, and Kami, and we can find that the average test time per query of DIEM and Kami is the same, which is both much faster than the TM, which verifies the efficiency of our model. And thank you, that's all. Very nice. Right in time, we have the luxury of eight full minutes of question answering. I so questions. Otherwise, I will go through my list. Um, is one of the authors online to answer questions? Uh, yes, I'm online. Uh, sorry for that. I can't present uh, online, but uh, uh, if there are any questions, I can answer right now. All right. So uh, one clarification and one question. So one clarification is um, you mentioned that you do this triplet generation and uh, I'm wondering how did you do the negative sampling there? What, what uh, did you try some usual methods or is there any clever hard negative mining techniques you used? Um, actually, uh, the negative sampling is only used in the uh, in the in the previous loss uh, in the uh, dynamic relations and the static relations and not used in the homogenization loss and in static relation and dynamic relations we uh, simply uh, active sampling use uh, we, we use a, a normal distribution to 
uh, sorry, so, sorry, we use the uniform distribution to negative sample the uh, negative uh, samples. Yes. What do you mean uh, use uniform sam uniform distributions to do negative sampling? Uh, so uh, what yes. could be a negative uh, sample? Uh, we just follow the previous approaches. Uh, the main structure, uh, the, the main uh, idea of this paper comes from the DIM. We uh, improve DIM with uh, k different uh, interests. Uh, the original DIM model uh, uh, adapts a uniform distribution to select negative sampling uh, to, uh, to select ne negative samples. Mm -hmm. 